Oh, sir, cried the railway official. You have to stop them. They're likely to do anything. You're familiar with the theory of evolution, asked Cabal. Sir, they're about to find out why intelligence is a survival trait. Hello, everyone. I just finished reading Johannes Cabal the Necromancer by Jonathan L. Howard, specifically the audiobook version narrated by Christopher Casanova. Here's the summary. A charmingly gothic, fiendishly funny Faustian tale about a brilliant scientist who makes a deal with the devil twice. Johannes Cabal sold his soul years ago in order to learn the laws of necromancy. Now he wants it back. Amused and slightly bored, Satan proposes a little wager. Johannes has to persuade 100 people to sign over their souls or he will be damned forever, this time for real. Accepting the bargain, Johannes is given one calendar year and a traveling carnival to complete his task. With little time to waste, Johannes raises a motley crew from the dead and enlists his brother, Horst, a charismatic vampire, to help him run his nefarious road show, resulting in mayhem at every turn. And now for my review. I mean, who doesn't want to read about the hilarity that ensues from Hell's bureaucracy and paperwork? This is a book where the journey is just as important as the destination, if not more so. I was invested in the scenes for their own sake and not just the ultimate goal. While the pacing is mostly even, some parts do wander to other character points of view, are barely tangential to the main story, and should have been cut because they killed the pacing. My favorite parts of the book are the smart writing and dry humor. It's dark, sassy, and very British, which made for an entertaining read. The audiobook narrator really brought the flavor of the characters to life. It felt weird to root for a protagonist who steals souls, especially since you're also rooting for the characters acting against him, but the author does a good job of balancing the villain and anti-hero in the same character. I loved Horst and the foil he provides for Johannes. The book isn't perfect, and I found some minor things to quibble about throughout. However, the sarcastic, subtle humor bumped my rating from 3.5 stars to 4 stars. The ending provided intriguing fodder for the subsequent books, which I plan to read. You might like this if you like Neil Gaiman's books or the character and world of John Constantine. And that's my review for the book. Have you read it? Does it sound interesting to you? Let me know in the comments. Until next time, have a great day.